A needs assessment is an important step in all levels of learning design, whether you're designing an individual course, a larger program, or a learning journey, and even if you're creating a learning strategy for the learning and development function. The value of a needs assessment is that it helps ensure a few things. First of all, that we know what the real performances issue is, not just the one that the client or the business manager is coming and telling you uh, is the problem. So often there's a surface issue. We need training in this. But if you dig a little bit and do that needs assessment, you'll realize this is just the surface. The real issue is something else underneath. It also helps us understand the audience, uh, which when combined the audience and knowing the real problem allows us to uh, have a program or sets the stage for us to design a course that is going to actually change behavior. Finally, having a needs assessment also sets the stage for measuring the impact and the results after the program has been implemented. So I always think of it as books on a bookshelf. This is the program or the topics or the modules. You have to bookend it with a needs assessment and on the other end with an evaluation. So you can't evaluate it if you haven't defined what you're trying to get out of the program at the beginning. So it's it sets the stage for being able to evaluate it later on. So even though there's all those values and benefits of doing a needs assessment, uh, often we don't do them. And I see lots of clients who don't take the time to do a needs assessment. A colleague of mine, Michelle, commented on an earlier post on LinkedIn, and she wondered about how to, how to identify who to be involved in the process. And I think there's lots of reasons why clients don't take the time to do a needs assessment. And in case identifying who those people are who should be involved is one of the barriers, let me share my insights and the things that I look for and I consider uh, so that hopefully that at least removes that one barrier. Maybe you'll be more apt to creating a, to uh, doing a needs assessment uh, going forward. So there's a few things that I consider. First is a RACI, R-A-C-I or R-A-S-C-I. And it's a fairly common project management uh, model. And it stands for identifying the different stakeholders that are in the project that you're working on or the course that you're designing. So R stands for responsible, who's ultimately responsible for getting the work done. A stands for accountable, who's the one who's going to be doing the sign off. Support, which wasn't always there, but I think it's an important one to add. Uh, who are the people who are behind the scenes, usually supporting the people or the person who's doing, who's responsible, the R person. Then you also have folks who are consulted. You want to get their input, but they're not actually doing the work. So that could be a subject matter expert, maybe. And then who are the people who are informed? So those are people, that's a one-way communication where you're keeping them up to date on how the, the course is unfolding. So I look at a RACI and I define who, who are the people that fall into those categories, both for figuring out during the project, but also kind of more broadly, who's going to be impacted by that. And that's kind of my next piece is I think about not just the design and development stage, but also the implementation phase. So who's going to be involved in the work effort and creating it, but who's going to be impacted by that change? Because of course, we're designing programs to, to result in behavior change. The other thing I look at is who has the content expertise. So I'm doing a needs assessment. I want to talk to the subject matter experts or the content experts to find out what it is that they uh, think needs to be in the program. I might talk to the target audience. So maybe it's for uh, frontline workers. So I might pull them in and then also their supervisors to get their perspective. And then lastly, I try and I, or I work with my client to identify who are the biggest resistors. And uh, I try and include some of those folks so that we can give them a voice early on. They might have a really good perspective that I'm not aware of. So I want to hear that. Um, or maybe their perspective is kind of one of many, which is fine too. But if I can give them a voice early on, then I can get their buy-in hopefully and reduce the degree to which they might sabotage the implementation later on. So lots of things to consider. And um, I hope that all of those don't make it feel more intimidating starting a needs assessment. Certainly you can do broader needs assessments that take longer, and then you can do kind of quick and dirty ones. And like I said, it helps at lots of different levels. So if it's just an individual course, you might do a, a, a shorter one. If it's a curriculum design or a learning path or even a learning strategy that you're working on, you're going to want to go even more in depth and be, have a more involved uh, needs assessment. So I hope that helps and um, let me know uh, if, it, uh, if it works out for you.